Good morning. Good morning. It's yeah, Monday. Yes, it, is. it is. Yeah, it is. yeah, yeah, yeah. August seems to be running very, very fast it as is. well. This, I mean. this year, I think, is run by so fast. I don't yeah. even know where it's in a hurry to. I hope that just the way it's running by, COVID yeah. is also running by. So hopefully, in the next few months, we'll be able <laughs> we'll, to. we'll be done with it. Yeah, I really I, I'm, hope so. I'm, I'm thinking. I mean, we we got some vaccines uh, yeah. into the country, about some seventeen thousand. About seventeen thousand. Yes. Um, you know, which is a good thing. Um, question on my mind this morning, and I'm hoping that um, the ministry would come and explain. Mm. This is Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. So for those who took the AstraZeneca, mm -hmm. um, can they mix it with the Johnson and Johnson? Can they not? Hmm. Um, yeah, somebody should be explaining the size to us. Yeah. I, and I think that, again, I'll repeat, the behavioral change communication has not been done properly. And when you talk about it, then they turn the guns on the media that the media should be supporting. I don't know any media house in this country that dedicated too much airtime to COVID than TV3 Media mm. General did. Mm. In fact, even before government started its um, advertorials yeah, on COVID-19, okay. we yeah. had done an in-house thing. Mm -hmm. We had started educating people on what it was and all of that. So sometimes I think that we need to cut the media some slack, yeah. especially knowing that during the height of the COVID pandemic, there was no support for media houses. Mm -hmm. And you know that airtime, electricity, staff, and all the overheads, come at a certain cost. Mm. So if now we're being told that even food, vaccines, everything else costs money, we should also be thinking about the media. How did they survive during that time? Yeah. And how are they still keeping their, you know, their, I, I remember that on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, they used to put there, wear your mask. Mm, no, yeah. It was always there on the yeah. front page of the Ghanaian Times. At some point they stopped because, you know, you, you need that space also to sell. Mm -hmm. It's public health, we're trying to do our best. but. When the communication is left to the politicians, NDC will run it down and then people will try to run it up. Mm. So anything you do, NDC will say, that's not good, that's not what it is. And people will say, that is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And it goes back to the behavioral change communication because president comes to announce that I have banned and re-banned uh, funeral after, after parties yes. and parties and all other super spreader effect, yeah, uh, events. Mr. President, whoever wrote it in your speech, yeah. he lied to you. It's happening. I am telling you, sir. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. President. Whoever wrote those things in your book, pubs, nightclub, beaches remain closed, uh, funeral, after parties and parties and all other such events. Whoever wrote it in your speech and made you read it three times, he lied to you, boss. They have been lying to you since day one. They have been telling lies to you. If you like, I say, bring a car, Mr. President. Hmm. Bring your car, saloon car, let's disguise ourselves and go to town. You will be so shocked you can't sleep. You will be so shocked you cannot sleep, Mr. President. Those who put those things in your speech, they lie to you, Mr. President. Don't let them lie to you. Good morning. Hmm. Well, as at August 3, we're told that eight more people, nine more people had died. And I think that maybe it's time that we keep putting out these numbers on a daily basis so that people would be very much aware of it. Mm. You know, it's like we release it after every, what, three days, four yeah, days. And yeah. so people think that, oh, it's just one of those things. Nine people, it's fine. But uh, at this point, we're going to have to be updating you every single day so you know how serious this is. People are dying and you need to adhere to the COVID protocols. But away from that, and still talking about COVID, my biggest concern this mm. morning is that 16 million and over Ghana cities that we have lost <laughs> or have paid, um, you know, it, as a result of, you know, purchasing Sputnik V. And, you know, that committee that probed the purchase of the Sputnik V, you know, that allegation yeah, the that came committee. exactly. Mm. And so they've put out their report. And for me, I'm, I'm disturbed by, you know, the revelations that have been made, that the mm. health minister sidestepped cabinet, sidestepped parliament, sidestepped PPA, um, you know, PPA mm. as well to purchase this. And you remember some two weeks ago, he had mentioned during the probe mm -hmm. that, you know, he was not in his right you know, senses. He was, you know, <laughs> things were difficult for him at the time when he was making that decision. And the committee says that that is not a viable excuse because mm. you could have still come to parliament mm -hmm. and parliament, knowing the exigencies of the COVID-19 pandemic, mm. would have found a way to also, you know, fasten the process so mm. we can purchase these um, vaccines. You did not do that. And now here we are and we've paid over 16 million Ghana cities for Sputnik V. And missed this you, whole you know, you know, when this matter broke, we had a direct connection with our partners in Norway, mm. the VG newspaper, mm -hmm. Marcus Tobiasen. He had mentioned to us that he had a conversation with Mr. Ken Ophiata, who is the finance minister, mm -hmm. 
who had then told him and confirmed that we had paid for 300,000. This was around the same time that you had government communicators and mm. everybody else, including the Chairman minister. The health committee and the government. health committee, Dr. Yeah. Abedi, uh, saying that we have not spent any money, that if anybody thinks that they have what it takes and they have the capacity, they should come to the ministry. The ministry will give them a letter to mm. come in. So we were told pure and plain lies that we had not spent any money. Now, Fast forward, we are learning that we have actually paid some money and what we paid for has even not been brought in. Mm -hmm. Because if you paid 50% of whatever you were looking at, you got so. only 20,000 of it, then where are you heading? You sidestep parliament, you sidestep PPA, and you sidestep cabinet. cabinet. Mm -hmm. Now, I've also heard the ridiculous argument about section 18 of the Financial Management Act. Now, that's gives you some instances where you can sidestep policies and mm -hmm. all of that. But it starts with the first sentence that says, it must be with the written approval of cabinet. So the minister is a member of cabinet. He couldn't have gone to cabinet mm -hmm. if he thought that parliament was going to delay. Mm -hmm. Even though parliament, throughout the probe, has said that they could have done they it have under a certificate the of emergency. Exactly. So what, what exactly was that? I mean, I, I think that the minister is taking the fall for a lot more people. Because the way our gift me system works, if Bella makes a request, it comes, it goes about three or four back and forth before the deal is signed. So when the minister wrote to the finance ministry, which was also evident at the committee level, mm -hmm. when he wrote to the finance ministry, specifically asking for those ones, what was the reply of the finance ministry? Who released the money? Mm -hmm. How was it released? For what purpose? With what understanding that it has satisfied everything, satisfied everything from the PPA to cabinet to parliament? At least one, just one. Hmm. What are we doing in, 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 this, in all of this? And, and right from the get-go, we have used COVID as an excuse for nearly everything that is done. And when you say, they say, we are not in normal times. We are not in normal times, so must we misbehave? Now, here we are. Those who took AstraZeneca mm -hmm. uh, first shots are waiting for their boosters. It's been past 12 weeks. It. In fact, they told us that it's between 8 and 12 weeks. I'm not a scientist. It is the scientists who told us that you take your first shot, it is between 8, eight to and 12. 12 weeks. Now we ask them and they tell you that, well, at least it still offers some protection beyond the 12 weeks. And so we should be patient. We'll get the but vaccines. The who but made, but the people who made their vaccines, they, they know. That's why, that's why you, you're, nobody who held a gun to anybody's head mm -hmm. to come and tell us that it is between 8 and 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Nobody held a gun to anybody's head. You have told us, and even the eight, between 8 and 12 weeks, that's the max, mm -hmm. according to you. Because people were beginning to agitate. Now, people have gone out to take the first dose of AstraZeneca. They need they the booster, as the doctor said. They don't know what it is. Now, we are brought in Johnson & Johnson, 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 which is good for the other batch who will now take it. Question, can they can mix the two? Can we also take it? Exactly. Can they exactly. mix the two at this point? If they cannot mix the two, what's happening to those ones? And mm -hmm. we do know, per the science that has been explained to us, once you take the job and it, it takes uh, forever, you tend to lose a bit of the cover. So what's happening? Hmm. And now we had opportunity. You see, when we had opportunity at this country, when COVID started, to start making down payments for the COVID vaccines and all of that, we were busy talking about Dawa Dawa. We had money. We held on to the money. We had gone for IMF, World Bank, all of these, those monies. We had gone into our, our coffers. Uh, 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 what you call sinking fund to go and take money. And we're busy talking about that. that when other countries were contributing to making a down payment to the, to the production of vaccines, you think that, like the popular NC, NC, no contribution, no chop. If we have contributed to something to, to, to create the vaccine, we, we would give it to somebody who has not contributed. Hmm. We're busy talking about that. that what is this? We're yet to hear from the health minister. I don't know if he's going to resign as people are expecting, especially because at this point there's really nothing that uh, can defend exactly what has come out from uh, the bipartisan committee. I know in Parliament, just before um, you know, they rose, they had tried to get a vote of no confidence, um, you know, just to get the minister to step aside. That didn't happen.
and now Parliament is on recession. And so what is the way forward with regards to the health minister? Is he going to step down? How do we retrieve? Because now, um, you know, the finance ministry is being asked to retrieve that over 16 million Ghana cities that has been paid to Sheikh Al Maktoum's uh, company. And they had promised that they were going to procure some Sputnik V vaccines for us. Now the contract has been mm -hmm. terminated. Mm -hmm. And so what is the arrangement? Is he going to return, um, you know, the amount of money, uh, you know, that he was paid? That, that, was, the, that was the recommendation. Yeah. That's the committee says they should retrieve the money. But, but then how the, the easy question is it going to be? The question I ask myself is this. If you and I spend state money that we are not supposed to spend by arrogating the powers of cabinet, mm -hmm. the powers of parliament, mm -hmm. the powers of the PPA board onto ourselves, and by saying that we are not thinking right, nobody would ask us to refund. They will put us they before a judge before a and judge. jail exactly. us. Especially because of this whole Saglemi thing and the fact that even the Attorney General has started processes. Uh, some 52 uh, accusations have been leveled against the former Collins works and mm. housing minister. And so they were asking the same question. Same that principle. If you're doing this to us because you're saying that we willfully cause financial loss to the mm. state, this is also another clear indication of causing financial loss to the right. state. What's going to happen to the finance minister aside asking that the finance ministry, well, the health minister, pardon mm. me, aside asking the finance ministry to retrieve the money, are they also going to send him to court? You see, me, I'm not interested in the NDC MPP bit of it. Mm. That if you do this to us, we will do this to you. Or if you are doing this to us, you must do this to us. No, but it's, it it's a matter be, of being it equal. Must, thank you. It if must you're doing be it to everyone else, the Ghana you should agenda. also face it. Yeah. If Mr. Collins, Elijah Collins, Dowda is guilty and is found to be guilty, let the law deal with him. Mm -hmm. If Kwekwajima Menu is guilty, let the law deal with him. But Mr. President, you told us that you have the men. Mr. President, you told us mm. that you have the men. The people of Ghana believed you. You remember the snake, the snake serum scandal? You remember that? You remember the condom procurement scandal? You remember that? You remember when the health minister had COVID and said was resting at the University of Ghana Medical Center? I remember that. He had to take you, Mr. President, to address us on a Sunday evening to say that the health minister indeed had COVID. And he missed that opportunity to have assured all of us to have stayed away from stigma. Because if you have the virus and you keep it to yourself and you deny the fact that you, you have it, then it becomes problematic. Then you start spreading. Then you start hugging people at party primaries. Then you start going to parliament to snatch mallot boxes and, and ballot papers. Mr. President, this is not right. And you see, I am saddened because it does appear that the president is not paying attention to all of this. Since this matter started, the president has addressed the nation so many times. The president has not whispered a word about it. Since this matter started, and since the fixed the country people started, the president has had occasion to address the nation on so many times. In fact, at the last holiday, where he was speaking about Gorgis uh, and, and all of that, mm. he never breathed a word about the thing. So somebody, when, when people say the president has lost touch with the people, I feel pained, but I'm tempted to agree with them. Because if the realities that people are talking about... Mm. Is, is a departure from what the president is talking about, then it's a big problem. I still am in shock when the president puts in his speech that all pubs and beaches and nightclubs remain closed. Funeral receptions and weddings have been banned. And then you go to town on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you and see people chilling happening. as if nothing is happening. They are drinking, mm. shouting mm. into their faces, screaming. Then I ask myself, is it the national security is it the NIB? Is it his presidential advisor on health? Who told the president that lie to come and repeat to us on, on, on Sundays repeatedly? Who has been lying to the president to come and be saying pubs, nightclub, beaches remain closed, funeral receptions banned, weddings receptions banned? Who has been lying to the president? Mr. President, they are lying to you. I'm saying this for the umpteenth time. They are lying to you when they say, you see, now people don't care when the Ghana Health Service puts up the figures on their dashboard to say, so, so, and so number of people have contracted COVID-19. This is the total number of infections, total number of recoveries, total number of people who have died. People actually don't care anymore. You know why? Because we have created a certain sense of false hope in their minds. 
We started off and said, spread calm, not fear. Then some of us said, spread calm, but not recklessness. You see how reckless the people have become? Because again, we were busy explaining that the campaigns that we had in December and November is not, were not super spreader if events. And that what, whatever spike we had in January cannot be attributed to it because there's no science to it. So now you have told the people that they can go and mass up, but so far as it is a, an open space, they can do whatever it is and the virus will be scared of them. You see the problem we have caused for ourselves? And they keep putting in your speech. That's where, and no crap, and no, and no, and no, and no, Mr. President. And no, and no, who puts it in your speech? Anyway. Who, who advises you to come and read, Mr. President, that all pubs and nightclubs and beaches remain closed? Who, who does that? They are lying to you, Mr. President. I say, bring your car. If you like, let's use a motorbike, two helmets, me and you. I'll ride. You sit at my back or you can ride. I'll sit at your back. Because, Mr. President, you grew up in Nima. And let's go to town. I'll take you to all the corners, thanks to Community Connect. I'll take you to all the corners. You will be shocked. You can't sleep. Good morning. Anyway, let us know what you think about this particular issue. The hashtag is TV3 New Day. We'll be talking about special makeup effects, uh, special effects makeup later on the show as well, especially for you creatives. And so look forward to that. Join us in the conversation and stay with us right here on TV3 New Day. We're on till 10 a.m. We'll be back.